الحمد لله نحمده ونستعيده ونستغفره ونستهديه ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يبدل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له له الملك وله الحمد يحيي ويميت وهو على كل شيء قدير سبحانه وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله وصفيه من خلقه وخليله أدى الأمانة وبلغ الرسالة ونصح الأمة وكشف عنها بإذن الله الغمة وتركها على المحجة البيضاء ليلها كنهارها لا يزيغ عنها إلا هالك فصلوات ربي وسلامه عليه وعلى آله وصحابته أجمعين أما بعد فإن أصدق الحديث كلام الله سبحانه وتعالى وخير الهدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الأمور محدثاتها وكل محدثة بدعة وكل بدعة ضلالة وكل ضلالة في النار اللهم أجلنا وأهدينا من النار يا رب العالمين وأسكننا بفضلك وكرمك وأجودك جنات النعيم أما بعد يقول الله سبحانه وتعالى في كتابه الكريم بعد أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم وكذلك جعلناكم أمة وسطا لتكونوا شهداء على الناس ويكون الرسول عليكم شهيدا وسبحانه وتعالى says and thus we have made you a temperate nation, a middle nation, that you will be witnesses over the people. And the messenger of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will be the witness over you. In this verse, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala address us, address the Muslim nation. It shows in this ayah the great reality of this Ummah in the universe. It is enormous function on this earth. And the essential rule of our Ummah among the life of all people. It is that middle nation that witness over other nations and establish justice and fairness among them. But what is Wasab? What is wasafiyya? Did any one of us question that word? Ask ourselves when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says ummatan wasatan, what wasafiyya means? I'm sure we did. And I'm sure we get some answers. If you think the wasafiyya is from superiority and excellence of that nation, it is. If the wasatiya from the justice and the balance within that nation, it is. In fact, it is all that aspect of the wasatiya. I'm going to summarize here two points that most of the scholars agreed upon what our Muslim nation should be. When I think about Muslim nation, the whole Muslim nation, not a specific nation. Our Muslim nation is a middle ground nation in belief and vision. It is not a nation of only pure spiritual devotion. Tajarrud ruhi. No. Only tajarrud ruhi. It is not. At the same time, it is not in the other extreme. It is not a nation of materialistic deterioration. Intikasun maddi. Deterioration. Material. So what it is? It is in the middle. It is a nation that follows the immediate, the fitra. What is the fitra? The balance between the body and the soul. This is, should be the legality of our nation, our Muslim Ummah. In a second point, 
Our nation is the middle nation in reflection and sensation, in thoughts, fear, shurur. It is a nation that does not stop where we know and where we have learned. And then close every door or inlet for knowledge and experience. No, it is not. And it should not be. Nor it is a nation that follows every croaking and or whooping. Everybody comes with an idea, raise their voice, follow them. No, it is not. Nor it is not even a nation that follows blind imitation. Then those are the extremes. Where is the middle? Where is the middle ground between all of this? It is a nation and it should be holding to what? To its roots, foundations, methodologies, and then investigate and examine any other product that results from thoughts and experience. If that thoughts and experience agrees with our roots, foundation, value, principle, Islamic value, within the frame, we are accepted and welcoming. And if it is not purely or totally absolutely, we will reject it. Any of us, of us, when you look at the teachings of our deen, you will find that all of it are based on balance and moderation. Well, in all sides of our life, whether spiritually, socially, culturally, morally, or even politically, you look at every aspect, it is. Our, our teaching, our Islamic teaching, has that aspect, moderation, and the balance between all of this. Our Islamic teachings definitely negate and reject any extreme activities. Anywhere you read in the Quran, anywhere you read in Sirah, or in the saying of the Prophet وسلم, we see that the balance and moderation are the key success, are the key to the success and the happiness in this life. <coughs> and anyone wants to make this deed tough and rigid religion, they are the resource. Well, after all this introduction about the topic, moderation and the balance in Islam, let me take you with a journey. In a journey with the saying of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from Quran. And the selection I got, it is just samples, and you can get more and more when you dig in and you read the Quran. The first ayah I will start with, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talks to Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and says, Taha ma anzalna alayka al-Qur'an li tashqa. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala addressed Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam saying, O oh Muhammad, we, we have not sent down or revealed the Quran to you to be a source of distress and misery, but only as a reminder for those who hear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talks about Shah Ramadan, in the beginning of the ayah, we, know, we all of us know that ayah. Shah Ramadan al-Ladhi unzila fihi al-Qur'an khudan lil-nasi wa mahinatim min al-huda wa al-Qur'an. And then at the end of the ayah, what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, يريد الله بكم اليسر ولا يريد بكم العسر. يسر not عسر. In this ayah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala 
saying that the month of Ramadan is the blessed month where the Quran have revealed and if any Muslim that can fast and witness that month, they have to fast. But at the same time, he got give us the rosa, the license for those uh, sick and travelers. And all of us know that you can pray to fast to make it up later on. And then that's why the implementation of what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala you read Allah Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala intends for you ease and facility and does not intend for you hardship. In the ayat at the end of Surah Al Furqan, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talks about a group of believers and He called them Ibadul Rahman, the practicing Muslim. What did He describe those? Many descriptions. In many ayahs, but I will pick this ayah, Yaqul. وَالَّذِينَ إِذَا أَنْفَقُوا لَمْ يُسْرِفُوا وَلَمْ يَقْطُرُوا وَكَانَ بَيْنَ ذَلِكَ قَوَامًا Surah Al-Furqan Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talks about the good practicing Muslims He called them Ibad al-Rahman and describes them with many descriptions and one of them Will they, they spend uh, their money? They are on the moderate side. They are not heavy suspenders, and all they are stingy, but they are in between, justly moderate. In another ayah, Yaqulullah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Ya bani Adam, kudu zinatakum inda kulla masjid wa kudu wa shrabu wa la tusrifu innahu la yuhibbu al-musrifin O children of Adam, take your best clothes, wear your best clothes at every masjid, on every prayer. And then he concluded that ayah and says, eat and drink, but do not waste by excess. Because indeed, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not like those who commit excess. Moderation, balance. And then I conclude by that ayah. Yaqulullah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Qul idu'u Allah aw du'u rahman أيما تدعو فله الأسماء الحسنى ولا تجهر بصلاتك ولا تخافت بها وابتغ بين ذلك سبيلا وسبحانه وتعالى سيس أو محمد call upon Allah or call upon the most merciful whichever name you call to him belong the best names. And do not, when you make dua, prayer here, salat, dua, when you make dua, do not make it loudly in your prayer dua, and do not make it quietly, but an intermediate way between the, the, the moderation, the balance between both that ways. These are some selections from the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then, as I said, if you really dig in and try to read more and more, you're going to come up with more. Because, as I stated, that in all our Islamic teaching, whether the Quran and Sunnah are based on this moderation and balance. Now, I'm going to take you to another journey with the Prophet. What did he say? about his seerah, about his action, about his hadith. عَنَا عِشَ رَضِ اللَّهُ عَنَا قَالَ مَا خُيِّرَ النَّبِيُّ صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمَ بَيْنَ أَمْرَيْنِ إِلَّا اخْتَارَ أَيْسَرَهُمَا مَا لَمْ يَكُنْ حَرَّهُ صلى الله عليه يا رسول الله 
Aisha radiallahu anha narrated and said that whenever the Prophet of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam given the choice between two matters, he always chooses the easiest unless it is a sin or it is haram. Wa fi sunan al-bayhaqi anna rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam aqal khayyul umuni aw sabuha. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in another narration said the best of all dealing, the best of all matters is the one which is moderate, which is middle of these matters. Muhammad ibn Mas'ud radiallahu anhu qal, qala Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, halaka al-mutanatti'oon, halaka al-mutanatti'oon, halaka al-mutanatti'oon, halaka. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, narrated Ibn Mas'ud, may Allah be pleased with him, that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, they are the losers. Who may Rasulullah? Those who make the deen, our deen, hard and tough. They destroy themselves. Those who enforce tough and hard practices of Islam. When Abdullah Jabir, ابن سمارة قال كنت أصلي مع رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم الصلوات يومية فكانت صلاته قصدا وأضاء وكانت خطبته قصدا جابر بن سمارة رضي الله عنه said that he used to pray with the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم the regular prayers and his prayers were moderate and then he added to that and says, and also his khutbah with the moderate. I think this is a message for me and everybody in this member to be moderate in their khutbah, to finish on time. And this is a tradition. When, when we go anywhere, annual khutbah, we used to do, we ask the people, what is the time allowed? 20 minutes. You should stay 20 minutes. Right? The khutbah is message. It's a message to our people. If you can deliver that message, Within the 20 minutes, he did a good job. All the days, 10 years ago, I did a khutbah after long khutbah, and then I finished the khutbah on time, 2.30 as usual, and when I came down, I found a brother coming to me, hugging me, and says, Bitaq Allah khair. I thought it's a good khutbah, and I said, Alhamdulillah, he said, you finished on time. In another hadith, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam yaqul, inna li rabbika alayka haqqa, wa inna li nafsika alayka haqqa, wa li ahlika alayka haqqa. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, yourself, your family, fa'aati kulla di haqqin haqqa. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, you had a duty to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He said, your first thing, obligations and duty to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You have duties towards yourself. You have duties towards your family. So, give every one of those their duties. And, and, uh, uh, offer them, deliver them, and be just and moderate on this. Unfortunately, we sometimes, may, you know, hear this, uh, and many people, they just pick and choose and say, uh, the Prophet said, illa nafs, illa, illa nafs Yes, this is true, but mention the other two categories. No pick one and uh, just to choose it. وَحِنَمَا بَعْتَ الرَّسُولُ صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمَ صَاحِبَيْهِ إِلَى الْيَمَنِ They got what? الناس إلى الإسلام في اليمن. اللهم سهل على أهلنا في اليمن يا رب العالمين. يا رب. <تصفيق> ماذا قال لهم؟ ماذا نصحهم؟ اسمعوا يا أبتي. بشرا ولا تنفرا ويسرا ولا تعسرا. Great words. 
the Prophet sent two messengers to Al Yaman. Think one of them is Mu'adh ibn Jabal and other Sahabi, can't recall his name. And he advised them, when you go there, four things. Bashira, give glad tidings. Wala don't turn the people away. Don't scare them from the for our deed. And the second, the third one, Wayasira, make it easy. Facilitate it. Wala to asira. Don't to make it hard on the people. When you look at this, when you look at all of these hadiths and all the ayat, we realize that, subhanAllah, this is our deed, the deed of moderation and balance. <laughs> Alhamdulillah, 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 with this incident, and it is narrated, and most of us uh, are aware of that, uh, when the three companions gathered in the masjid of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, and they were talking, and they were comparing their ibadah to whom? To the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And they realized that he cannot get so close even that much to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So they swear, and the promise itself, one of them said, well, I will fast all while, and I will never break my fast, means every day. And the other one said, I will do the night prayer, and I will never sleep. And the third one, could not find anything, said, I, I will not get married to women. The Prophet Sallallahu heard them. And when he get out, what did he say? What did, how did he address them, sallallahu alayhi wa He said, I am more fearful of Allah than any of you. And I fast sometimes, and I break my fast other times. I make my prayer, qiyam, and I sleep. And I get married to him. What is the message here? No, don't make this religion tough. Don't make it that hard on yourself. And it is the role model, our role model, saying that uh, to his companion uh, and advice them. As we have seen, brother and sister, through this selection of verses and the hadith, is that we should try our best to live in balance and moderation. In all aspects of our life, and you will find it, you will find that middle way, inshallah, if you try it out. By doing this, we will continue to live in peace and harmony. We will continue to live in happiness and comfort. We will encourage other Muslims to live and practice the teaching of uh, this deen without hardship. And inshallah, we will give uh, a great example for uh, our non-Muslim neighbors and uh, colleagues in uh, our world. So we should do our best uh, to do that, to follow that middle path, inshallah. At the end, I have a few words that I want to share with you. Uh, I did not get a lot of practice example, but the one that I really want is how do we raise our kids this middle way? Many of us, many, they want to raise their kids the way we've been raised back home. With all traditions and culture, whether it's good or bad. 
That's an extreme way of consciousness. And some of us, when they come here, they leave them get free to be raised in the Western culture. And that's the other extreme. So where is the middle way between them? Definitely is to pick the best of both cultures. And a simple example from our culture, back home, and we, everybody would like that for their kids, is number one, respect our love for parents. Respect our love for elders. Connecting with the kinship, Salat al-Rahim, great values, and its culture, and at the same time, its Islamic value. Islamic principles, and we should read it. We should uh, bring our kids and raise our kids on this. But on the other side, there, there is a full control back home in some family. Full control on the kids till even age 25. They don't give room for choice of uh, anything. If uh, even the quality they want to get it, the quality they want to attend. They would force them to go to state and college. These are some examples that really it came to my mind. And uh, I wish that we have a panel discussion from parents and uh, 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 their kids uh, in, in a just nice tonight uh, with the attendance of the people in charge of the news and discuss this. Where is the middle way between those two? And how we can at least really our kids and be happy with the results, inshallah. I say this, عباد الله إن الله يأمر بالعدل والإحسان وإيتاء ذو القربى وينهى عن الفحشاء والمنكر والبغض يعظكم لعلكم تذكرون اذكروا الله يذكركم واستغفروه يغفر لكم وأقوم السلام